Hi guys, it's Avery here, and today I wanted to do a little Q&A. Papa Pepper asks, Sorry if you get this a lot, but what kind of bird is your author surrogate character? My author surrogate character is a crow, although I tend to largely refer to it as a corvid, but specifically it is supposed to be a crow. And then I got several questions about the origins of this crow character. And Fossa underscore 53 asked, Why are you a cute purple crow? Nick D's Honey asked, What are the origins of your little bird character? How'd you come up with the idea and all that? Holy Moly Macaron asked, How did you find your character? Bren Sucks asked, Do you like being a bird? Which I'm just gonna lump in with these. Um, yeah, I do like it. I mean, I am a human drawing a bird, but I like drawing the bird. And Shminarino asked, what inspired you to start the Corvid comics initially? So initially, the Corvid comics were meant as a therapy tool. I was going to therapy, and my therapist would assign me homework to do throughout the week. One week, she asked me, like, hey, I know you love to draw. Would you be able to design a very easy, fun-to-draw design to represent yourself so that you could make diary comics? about your feelings, about things that happen to you. That way you can externalize the emotions and also you can have a record of them for us to go over in session. So I tried a couple different designs. I tried a deer, I considered a cat, I considered a simplified human. Um, I even considered maybe using just a geometric shape like a triangle. But I eventually, out of all the designs I sort of sketched out and tried, I ended up liking the Corvid the most, so that is what I ended up sticking with. If you want to see those other designs and hear me go a little more in-depth into the origins of the Corvid, I've filmed a sketchbook tour, which I'll link up in the corner, which goes very much more into depth of like the initial sketches, my thought process, and the very first Corvid comics. If the origins of the Corvid are something that really interests you, I recommend clicking on that and sort of seeing the more in-depth process of the Corvid being created. TNT underscore Gal asks, What gave you the idea for your character designs? I absolutely love them. Well, I just went over the origins of the Corvid, the other main character in my comics. What up? <laughs> My partner, Aiden, is the black squirrel. I came up with that design basically because I asked them what animal they wanted to be. And at the time, they really liked these little black squirrels that were named Duke and Earl. We couldn't tell them apart, but they were named Duke and Earl as a duo. They would run around our yard, and my partner really liked them. So they asked to be a black squirrel like them. And for the character designs in the diary comics, generally, if it's someone I know, I directly ask them, hey, what animal or thing would you like to be? And if it's just a throwaway character, it tends to be whatever animal first comes to mind or that I've practiced drawing lately. Like in my early comics, I had recently visited my partner's brother's farm where he had pigs, so I'd practiced drawing pigs a lot, so a lot of the throwaway characters in my earlier comics are pigs. Later on, often I'll just use whatever animal I've been practicing drawing for a commission most recently is usually what I would use. If I haven't drawn an animal recently, often I'll draw a cat or a dog just because it's a very generic animal that doesn't have a lot of inherent ideas or biases attached to them. Ya boy ain't shit underscore asked, have you ever considered doing your comics digitally? Amazing art style, just asking. I actually did used to do a lot more digital art. I never did purely digital art, just because back when I did still do digital art, I used a drawing tablet where you have just the surface. It wasn't one of those ones where you draw directly onto the screen. You sort of had a black surface that you draw on and then you would look up at the screen and the disconnect between the two was very hard for me. Despite trying many times, I was really never able to get over the learning curve of trying to draw straight like that. Um, but in a lot of my earlier art and earlier sketchbooks, I did actually draw traditionally in graphite first and then scan it in and color it and sort of finish the lines digitally. I'm not sure I would ever consider doing my comics digitally just because traditional art 
is very satisfying for me. I very much like having the physical, tangible sketchbook to work in. I suppose that I would probably experiment more with digital art if I had tools such as an iPad and Procreate. That does seem very convenient and fun. I've seen a lot of people do some amazing art on those, but I do not have those tools, so I have not experimented with it. If I were presented with the opportunity, I would absolutely love experimenting with it, but it, that's a lot of money to invest to experiment with something when I already have a perfectly fine drawing style. That was a bit roundabout, but I hope that answered your question. Rory underscore Shields asked, Your work is very personal. Are you ever nervous about sharing those stories? Occasionally I am. Occasionally? <laughs> I'm sorry, would you like to answer this question, Aiden? You're super nervous. Okay, so I guess yes. I am often nervous. I often do quite a bit of thinking beforehand about whether or not the story is something I want to share in a comic. I don't remember where I saw this advice, but every person who does like autobiographical content should always have a private group chat and a vent account that no one follows. And that has honestly been incredibly good advice in my opinion. I can't say I have an exact process for deciding what's what, but there are definitely stories and feelings that are appropriate to share in diary comic format. And then there are stories and feelings that are really not appropriate to share in a diary comic format, whether they be too personal or they will embarrass someone in your life who has not consented to this story being shared. And that's then sometimes it's more appropriate you know, if you really need feedback or someone to listen to, talk about it in a private group chat. And sometimes there'll just be times when it's really not appropriate to share it with anyone, and that's when I post it to my event account that has no followers, that I don't allow anyone to follow and I keep locked. I do think quite deeply about which stories and feelings are appropriate to share. Often, if they involve someone in my life, I will ask their permission. Um, I did not do this for my sequence of Ridiculous Events comic, and that is probably the one I was most nervous about. I do try to keep it fairly non-specific if it's a story that paints someone else in a bad light, but there really was no way to be vague about that comic. Yes, again, a rambly answer, but I hope that answered your question. The short answer is yes, I guess. Under underscore Siege asks, Your art is amazing, but your writing is also incredible. Do you have any schooling slash training? First of all, thank you. I'm. It makes me very happy when people tell me that they think my writing is good, because that's actually what I would consider my weakest point. I have not had any sort of formal schooling or training in writing, um, or really in art for that matter. Informally, I do watch a lot of different YouTube videos on different aspects of writing. I think that's a great resource. And I also just try to read books critically. When I read a book and I enjoy it, I try to figure out why I enjoyed it, what aspects of the writing appeal to me. When I read a book I don't enjoy, I do the same thing. I try to figure out why I don't like it, what didn't appeal to me, what do I wish was done different. And probably that's the biggest thing that's helped my writing. But no, I don't have any formal training about writing. Gatunadi asked, For how long have you been drawing? P.S. Your work is amazing. Thank you. I would say I've been like drawing for fun my whole life. I definitely had sincere interest sparked in drawing around 13 years old via those how to draw manga books. And I sort of was very absorbed in drawing manga from around 13 to 16. And around 16, um, since I was doing concurrent enrollment courses in my local community college, I took a lot of community college courses around that time. They didn't get incredibly in-depth, but it did cover a lot of useful basics such as composition, color theory, how to like really look at an object you're referencing, that kind of thing. But I would definitely say that I was sort of inspired in waves. Around 13, I was very inspired by how to draw manga books. Around 16, I started taking formal art classes. Around 1920, I really resolved to stick to my sketchbooks and fill a page every day. And then when I was around 
22 is when I started drawing my diary comics. So, depending on how you count it, my whole life, 14 years, less than that. It sort of depends on where you're counting from. Confetti underscore spaghetti underscore asked, is drawing therapeutic slash enjoyable for you? Or is it more like a job some of the time? Um, I would say it's both. There are times when it is very therapeutic and enjoyable for me. There are times when I just really need to get something out and drawing it makes me feel better. And there are times that it's a job for me. I try at this point to draw a diary comic every single day, and sometimes I just don't have any ideas or I don't feel like it. And on those days when I can't rely on motivation or inspiration, I do rely on self-discipline, which is a practiced skill. Um, I definitely have had to practice being able to sit down in front of a blank page of my sketchbook and not get up until I've finished a comic. So yes, um, some days it's a job, some days it's very therapeutic and enjoyable for me. It, it can be both things, honestly. Audrey Blue 2 asks, any encouragement for starting a webcomic? Do it! Absolutely do it, that's my encouragement. I assume you're asking me about a webcomic in terms of like an autobio diary comic style webcomic since I have not ever run a fictional webcomic. I can't really speak to fictional webcomics. Even though I would very much like to do one, I have not done one. But when it comes to autobiographical webcomics, diary webcomics, my biggest advice is really to just go for it. Start writing about your life, start drawing, and just go from there. If you wait until you feel like your art is good enough to start a webcomic, you'll never get there. Your standards will just keep rising along with your skill level, and you will improve so much from doing regular comics. So I promise you that if you put it out there, there is someone out there who really wants and needs to see it. I have so, an idea for a webcomic. What's your idea for a webcomic? You and your friends sit on the couch and play video games and then make jokes about the video games you're playing. That sounds great. I can't believe no one's done that. Brandon Alexi asks, why are you so good at art? And can you show people your figure drawings from college? Thank you. Practice. It's all just practice, practice, practice. And also thank you. And I do have a video on my channel where I go through all the um, art from college that I still have. So I will also link that up in the corner. Kerma underscore XX asked, when you started your drawing, was it hard to find your own style? For me, it's very hard. Need tips. I would say finding my own style isn't actually something I put a lot of thought into. I'm not saying that I didn't try to develop my own style. I had much more of a focus on trying to improve different skill areas. And I sort of noticed that as you draw and try to improve, there'll be certain things that you just sort of do naturally that it's very hard to kick. And that's something that ends up going into your style. I would also say if you're looking to try and develop more of a style, look at the artists you like and try to pinpoint very specific things about their art that you think looks cool and try to incorporate that into your own drawings. I know I like to draw my drawings with a lot of like lines around the eye. That's very fun for me to draw and I think it looks very expressive. And that's something I definitely picked up from other artists who did it and I thought it looked cool, so I started doing it. Really, that's the best way to find your style, is just keep drawing, notice what you like, and keep doing that. Notice what you don't like and try to improve it, and just through that process you will eventually find a style that is yours. Lyle underscore Darnett asked, What are some art goals of yours? P.S. You're great and I appreciate you. Thank you. For a long time my goal was to do a webcomic, which I guess I technically do. I never think of my diary comics as a webcomic, but I guess that's what they are. My biggest art goal is I would love to complete a graphic novel at some point. I would really love to write, develop, and draw to completion a fictional graphic novel. And I do have a couple of projects I'm working on, but as I've mentioned before, writing is really not my strong suit, so all of them have been stuck in the writing phase, where I'm just trying to bring the stories to a point where they have a complete coherent script. And that <laughs> is something I've been working on for years, and probably I will not complete anytime soon, but that is a lifetime art goal of mine. Shminarino asks, do you have a favorite social media? 
or a one you think the Corvid comics work best in. I think that my favorite social media versus the one that I think the Corvid comics work best in is two different answers. Um, I think currently the Corvid comics work best on Instagram. I couldn't say necessarily why that is, but I think right now Instagram has sort of a good mixture of, um, it's a place where people tend to really like the diary comics medium. There's also the live feature, which is very nice for when I want to do live drawings. And there's also the story feature, which is good for putting little snippets of sort of my life as a human person and also behind the scenes stuff such as rough drafts. It's a good place to put that without cluttering up the main feed. So I think as a platform, Instagram is like what my art suits best and what I can use best to promote my art. However, my personal favorite social media is Tumblr. Ever since people sort of did a mass exit to Twitter a couple years ago, it's honestly been very peaceful. <laughs> Although- All the shitty drama people went for Twitter. They did. I wouldn't say the staff is good at making good updates. They're also incompetent enough that they can't really screw with the users to the degree that Instagram and Twitter can. The feed is still more or less chronological and mostly only shows you things from people you follow. And it's very easy between the filtering system, stuff like XKit, and just the way it's generally set up to really curate your content feed to what you want to see. So I would say my favorite social media to use is Tumblr. And honestly, specifically, not even my main Tumblr. I think my most fun thing is to just interact with the Metalocalypse fandom on my side blog. Shout out to the Tumblr Metalocalypse fandom. Love you guys. Vulpus underscore Velux underscore asked, How or where do you get inspired for your characters? So if they're diary comic characters, I get inspired by real life. I traded a little more in hyperbole in my earlier days of drawing, but these days, basically every diary comic is directly pulled from real life, or from my real life thoughts and feelings. For fictional characters, honestly, I start off with you know, the seed of an idea, like, what if there was a story that was a romance but also religious horror? Or what if a vampire hunter fell in love with a vampire? And from there, I'll just try and grow the story more and more by asking questions. I'll often try to delve deeper into the character's fears, desires, how they interact with the world by using tools such as the Enneagram to understand their personalities. I'll sometimes draw from different media or events and people in my real life, and, you know, that entire soup will just simmer together until it becomes a character that feels true and fleshed out. P.D. Olinsky 6224 asked, what type of pen do you use to write the text in your comics? I use a Sakura Jelly Roll Purple in 08. I just really like the line quality it has. It works well with alcohol markers. I really like colored lines. I used black lines for a long time, but I feel like colored lines look less harsh, just nicer. So yeah, that is the one I use. Seeking a Perhaps asked, how did you get into comics? Um, I don't know if you're asking about diary comics specifically, in which case I've already answered that question. But if you're asking about the comics medium in general, I would say as an early teenager, there was the sort of manga boom happening in the United States, and I loved manga. I consumed every series I could get my hands on, and it was really a way of storytelling and a medium that really appealed to me. Around the same time, I think, or maybe a bit later, I really got into the world of webcomics. These were sort of the days when Smack Jeeves was the go-to site for webcomics, and I just loved following all sorts of different webcomics. So I would say those were my two big gateways into the world of comics, were manga and webcomics. Ace Boy with Pets asks, At what age did you realize you were trans? I questioned my gender in high school, but didn't realize till 19. Um, I would say that I started questioning around 17 years old and really came to a decision right before my 18th birthday. Yeah, that's about when. 
Root Toot Kaput asks, How are you? I've been following you for some time and I have gotten worried here and there, though I will say that I have noticed a few things about you. You're resilient, and no matter what, you seem to be able to just push forward, which not many people can say. But yeah, I just wanted to say I'm proud of you for what it's worth. It's worth quite a bit. Thank you. I'm alright. I, I assume you mean, like, generally how am I? I tend to go up and down, but I'm in a pretty good place in my life in general. I know that when I post a long string of comics indicating that I'm kind of depressed in a row, people tend to get worried. There's usually a certain point when I'll start getting messages asking if I'm okay, but like, I'm pretty generally always okay. I've got a lot of coping mechanisms to use, one of which being my comics. I've got a great support network. I would say I'm in a really good place in my life. Thank you for asking. Tasty Doge asked, what's it like being you? Not just to be any particular thing about you, but just you. I'm honestly not sure how to answer that because I've never been anyone but me. Pretty good, I guess. Feels pretty good. Pogbird asked, How's your family on you identity now? Um, I sort of mentioned this in the comments of my Sequence of Ridiculous Things comic. I would say it's alright. Things aren't, like, perfect, but they're alright. Since the Sequence of Ridiculous Events comics, the events of that comic took place when I was sort of 19-ish years old. So that was quite a while ago. Since then, we've had another, we've had other opportunities to talk. Um, we did have a talk where I sort of let them ask anything they wanted. My parents did have a lot of questions for me and I answered them as best as I could. I do think they listened to what I had to say. Honestly, not sure how much they actually like understand why I am the way I am, but I can say they listened. Um, I gave them the option to either call me by my birth name and pronouns or my chosen name and pronouns, and they have chosen to continue calling me by my birth name and pronouns, which, you know, maybe someday I would like to change that. I haven't talked to my brother again about things, but I would very much like to. After publishing that comic, one of my cousins actually did get in contact with me and expressed her love and support for me and actually called me by my chosen name, which is the first time any blood relative has done that. And that's really encouraged me to want to talk to more of my extended family. And that's gonna take time and it's gonna take a lot of me screwing up my courage, but yeah. Things are okay, they could be better, and I'm hoping to work to make them even better. Buyings underscore nails asked, what advice would you give your younger self? What wouldn't you tell your younger self? God, yeah. I would warn myself away from- Stay away from those guys! <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely, the first thing I would warn myself is to stay away from some certain relationships in my life that, uh, sort of did a number on me. Second of all, I would show myself how to use a planner. I would sit myself down and be like, okay, I know people have told you to use a planner and you've just stared at the planner and been like, how do I translate this into not missing assignments and important meetings and stuff? And I would show my younger self how to properly use a planner. And then finally, I guess, I would tell my younger self that they should probably get medicated for depression because that's really screwing up their life. And also anxiety. That they need to research anxiety and depression, develop some coping me methods, and get medicated. Because boy would college have gone a lot easier with that. <laughs> Coco gave up asked, Do you know about kick rollers? Not spawns, but I think you'd really like them. Yeah, I do know about them. They look fun. For, for those who don't know, they're like a pair of shoes that have like little roll wheels like stuck up inside them and then you can sort of like kick out the wheels and roll around. They're kind of like, I think, the next generation of Heelys. They're not something that I really am interested in investing money into since from what I seem, they seem kind of expensive and I already have a pair of proper roller skates. But like, if I were to just acquire a pair, I think I would have a lot of fun with them. They look cool. Another goth asked, do you like going for walks in the woods? Yes, I love it. Under underscore Siege asked, What's your political stance? I, if you're looking for a specific label, I guess I would describe myself as an anarcho-pragmatist, in that my long-term goals and ideals mostly align with anarchism, but I do think it's important to take whatever short-term solutions will immediately minimize human pain and suffering. To speak more generally, I think I would say that I am leftist. I'm 
quite far left. I think that housing, food, medicine, all these things should be basic human rights. Um, I don't think any human should have to earn the right to a comfortable life. Dante underscore Deller asked, any book recommendations? Yes, my all time favorite book is Morris by E.M. Forster. I love E.M. Forster. E.M. Forster is my favorite author and Morris is, in my opinion, his best book. I also like sh certain short stories of his, like The Obelisk and What Does It Matter, but those can be harder to get your hands on, so... Morris by E.M. Forster, all-time favorite book. I also really like Dante and Aristotle Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Sanz. I think that one is gorgeous. I also really like Hero by Perry Moore. That one is also very good. Uh, I don't have physical copies of those two though because I like to listen to them on audiobook. Both of them are very good on audiobook. They have great narrators. So those are my top three books. Holy Moly Macron asked, have you watched Over the Garden Wall? I have. I love Over the Garden Wall. I rewatch it every autumn. My partner actually has the DVD. I really like Over the Garden Wall. I think it's great. Alistax asked, What's your relationship with choral music? Like, how did it become one of your go-tos? Um, I've been in choirs for a long time. Um, I think I started in a community choir around 7th grade age. That choir sort of had, like, tiers of choirs based on age ranges. So I was in that choir 7th grade and 8th grade, and then I moved up to the next sort of age range of choir, which was high school and young adults choir. And I was in that one from 9th grade age up until I left for college, so around 19. And that was, like, my very early introduction to choir music, and I just really, from the start, loved choir music. I already loved musicals, so I sort of really liked group singing, harmonies, that kind of thing, and I thought that choir music was just an incredibly beautiful art form. Later in college, I joined one of the college choirs, and I did that for a couple years. Recently, um, I had to stop for obvious 2020 reasons, but Previous to that, I was, I had just started in another community choir. I was on my second season when we had to stop. And I think a lot of my appreciation of choir music comes from having sung it. And I just really enjoy singing choir music. Being in a choir, there's something incredibly powerful about being in a group of singers singing beautiful music all together. And when I listen to choir music, it sort of captures part of that for me. Joshua underscore Guizar asks, How's your day? And Worthy42 asks, How are you? I'm doing good. I'm having a good day. I always get a little, like, frustrated and nervous when I try to film. But other than that, I was able to sleep in this morning. I had some really nice savory oatmeal. And after I'm done with this, um, it's actually kind of a nice day out. So I'm planning on going outside and doing some roller skating. So I'm having a good day. Really good day. Snoot Soe asked, Yo, 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 my man, what's the progress on the avocado plant? You frick with the garden? Much love. The avocado plant is doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Here it is. I grew this from an avocado pit, and it's just entering its sort of third growth stage. Um, it sort of grows in spurts, so this first sort of section is the first like growth it did from the pit and then I trimmed it once it got about this high to promote future growth and then it had another growth about to here like growth spurt and then hopefully you can see right here there's new baby leaves starting so it's gonna grow even taller it's doing really well I water it every day I rotate it so that it gets even sun, and I love it very much. As for the rest of the garden, it's currently winter in Massachusetts where I live, so all of it's been sort of moved inside. And they're doing all right, but it's since it's winter, they're sort of most most of the plants are sort of in a holding pattern. There's no there's not a lot of new growth going on with them. I do look forward to being able to put them back outside once spring comes and seeing a bunch of new growth sprout up. Shminarino asked, what's your favorite texture? My favorite texture is soft. I have this Bulbasaur stuffed animal that is very soft. 
His name is Blossom, and when I fall asleep, I like to pet his soft head, and it soothes me. I like soft things the best. Len the Space Wolf dot not dot a dot furry asked, trolley problem. Pull the lever? From an intellectual standpoint, yes, I would pull the lever to minimize Wait, human suffering. Who's on the track? What's the... I don't understand your question. Do you not know the classic trolley problem? I've heard so many variations and memes that I don't know anymore. No, it's usually there's one person on one track and five people on another track. And if you don't pull the lever, it, it runs over five people. If you do pull the lever, it only runs over one person, but you're personally responsible for it running over that one person. If I was actually there with a literal trolley barreling down the tracks, I can't say for certain that I wouldn't freeze up and end up not pulling the lever just because I was scared. Ganairi asks, favorite snack? cookies. <laughs> Specifically, I really like sandwich cookies, like Oreo cookies. Uh, I think my favorite cookies are actually like Thin Mint style mint and chocolate cookies. They just don't have those at the grocery store very often. But I think cookies are probably one of my favorite things to snack on, even though they're not very good for me. Michael.D.Paredes asked, what's your favorite pie flavor? I like strawberry pie the best. In the summer when strawberries are in season, Aiden will make strawberry pies and they're delicious. I love them. Never Never Art asked, best way to remove ants from a bathroom? First of all, Nev, I sincerely hope you'll have gotten rid of the ants by the time this video goes live. But I would say my go-to ant removing solution is just a big bottle of cinnamon. Just take the cinnamon and sprinkle it all over the ants, all over their tracks, all over the entrance where they're coming in. It's very messy, but it's very effective and is safe if you've got other pets around that might get into like ant traps. Also ant traps work if you have no qualms about using ant traps. Coldlife2000 asks, do you like chickens? I love chickens. I think chickens are so cute. I badly want to have chickens someday when I have like a yard that I own rather than a yardless house that I rent. Other than owning chickens, I do have the next best thing, which is a chicken themed 2021 calendar. Look at all those chickens. In all seriousness, I think chickens are definitely in my top favorite birds along with pigeons and crows. Corvids, pigeons, and chickens are my top favorite birds. From underscore ash underscore trees asks, do you prefer roller skates or roller blades? I haven't roller bladed in a long time, so I guess I would have to say I prefer roller skates or quad skates, because that's what I use. But I did used to roller blade as um, a kid slash teenager, and I found that really fun. I would honestly love to get my hands on a pair of roller blades and see what the difference is. But yeah, I'm probably contractually obligated to say that I prefer roller skates. And finally, Rach uh, underscore asks, favorite color? and then there's a purple heart and a red heart. So, you already guessed it. My favorite color is purple, and my second favorite color is red. And that's all our questions. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope maybe you learned something new about me or had a question you were curious about answered. If you sent me a question to be answered, thank you so much. Um, I had a really fun time answering all these, and I will see you next time in another video. Bye! I like doing the sinking clap, even if it's not necessary. Yeah.